I dropped out of every single class that I was taking for the spring semester of 2024 at CUNY SBS. Let's talk about it. Last I left off, I was finishing up my fall semester at CUNY SBS. I'm currently studying communications and media with a minor in disability studies. So I passed three of my classes with A's. They were very tough classes. The easiest class I ended up getting a C for because there was a weird glitch and my professor was uncommunicative as well as some accountability on my part, which I'll get to. But basically there was a couple assignments that I never noticed until the very end that said that they were due in January, which didn't make sense because this is a semester that takes place from august to early december so these due dates were like january february march didn't make sense i didn't do them i reached out to my professor she never answered me then i got a c minus for the class a c or a c minus or a c plus i don't even know i reached out to her showing proof of everything on my end that i've done and completed for the class and she took forever to message me back in fact throughout the whole semester she had never emailed me using my cuny student email or anything like that I used proper channels of communication and she never got back to me and she finally did after my advisor or like the head of the communications department or head of something messaged her she finally got back to me she's like I'm gonna be working with IT in order to prevent that from happening in the next semester but unless I showed proof of the assignments that I didn't do because I didn't think they were due I that's the grade I'm staying with um and at that point I had lost access to the courses that had already expired because this was already 15 days after the semester ending or our grades being put up there's an airplane flying by but I'm just gonna keep talking sorry y'all so that was really upsetting and I promised myself that I would do better that I would hold myself accountable have my syllabus ready to go a paper printed syllabus so that nothing could ever be changed you know so I went into the spring semester nervous but determined to do better and unfortunately that's not what happened I took four classes three communications classes and one of the class and they were all amazing my professors were super talented the, the coursework was actually stuff that I really really liked it was actually stuff that I'm capable of doing um, it wasn't just like straight up essays and stuff so I started off okay but by the fourth week I was falling behind and I kept saying all right I'm gonna catch up I'm gonna catch up I'm gonna catch up and the workload became overwhelming along with the fact that stuff in my personal life at work was also starting to become an issue. I ended up having to drop those classes. I dropped them very, very late. So I am liable for that tuition because financial aid did cover it initially. So I have to pay that off and I don't, don't have that money for that right now, much less pay it off and then pay for a fresh semester for the, what is it? We're, what are we entering into? We're gonna be entering into the fall semester. So Obviously, I'm gonna have to take a break from school until I can pay off what I owe. From then on, I'm probably only gonna be able to afford like one or two classes per semester, if that. Not only in terms of keeping up, I've learned my lesson. These classes are getting more difficult and it's hard to maintain with a 40 hour a week job. So I, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do about affording that. That'll be a different video, a different, you know, I'm not trying to stress about that right now because I've had so much going on. Um, in terms of being able to focus on class, work was taking up a big part. I was very unhappy with my job, um, not with the duties, well, some of it, yeah. Like, I worked at a museum, so I was front of house at a high traffic. It's not even that high traffic. It felt like it. Well, we'll I'll get to that. At a, at a museum, and then we were also gallery attendants, so we would sit in a gallery and talk to people about the art, which was cool, but also tell grown adults and their gross little kids to not touch things. And that was really hard, especially with the adults um, trying to monitor that and having seeing people like come in and out with no respect for the contemporary art galleries was really frustrating for me. I've done a similar job at the zoo. This was infinitely worse because you would think these people would know they're not reading the signage, they're not listening to the speech at the beginning, which I would always warn people, hey, when you're in the galleries, don't touch any of the artwork. So that part of the job was annoying, but also I felt that the job, despite me really enjoying my coworkers, most of them and management, I felt like there was no support built into the system. You, they'd always be like, oh, you can ask, you can ask if you need help, da, da 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 But I felt like even when we would call for help, it was never a sustainable thing. Like I have worked, and I feel like people deflect it often. They're like, oh, well, you know, we understand if you're not used to working with a lot of crowds or a lot of moving parts or, you know, and it wasn't about that. Like, it's like, you could be used to it. I've been accustomed to it. I've worked at the Bronx Zoo where we, you know, meet and greet, um, like, thousands of people especially on a Wednesday which is the free day so to me it wasn't a matter of people 
it was that I was given too many tasks that I was not able to accomplish in the way that I should be. Like I can't give people the experience that they deserve or the explanations they deserve because there wasn't enough support, there wasn't enough coverage. It was a whole thing, but like a sinking boat. So I'm glad I left, but I was intending on leaving back in December, but it was the holiday season. And like I said, I really love this place. I love working in Queens. I love being with people who recognize and love Queens as much as I do, especially because my whole life I've worked in the city. And when you talk about Queens there, it's like, oh, it's so far away. Wow, Queens is so far. I would never go. It was just really fun to work somewhere where people know the area. It was cool vibes for the most part. Some of it not. If you ignore the political contacts and all that stuff. I did a video about that a couple weeks ago. I left three days short of my one year anniversary there. And I miss it. I miss my friends. That's all I miss though. I know I made the right decision. I feel a lot better. It was really hard for me to get out of bed. I started developing an addiction to sleeping pills and these in particular are really not good so i used like three grams of melatonin which is a very simple easy perhaps too much of a light dose for me so i was like no i need something stronger uh so i got these from amazon it's 50 milligrams of these and i started by taking them once a week and then every other day and then every day and i had a hard time getting out of bed but also i was having really vivid nightmares every single day that felt so real and then i had to wean myself off of that i don't take them anymore i have to toss them and yeah I was unhappy with my job but basically like it was just not not what I wanted for myself like it, when I was intending on leaving and I was thinking of going back to retail oh, I had so many people be like oh retail I would I'd rather be here than in retail and I for me retail is a transactional thing it's like here you go this is what it is this is what it's not like you're, you're either gonna take this item or you're not I very much enjoy retail I mean obviously it's not perfect and it really depends on where you're working I had really great experiences um where I was before like I really enjoy working in merchandising and stuff so for me leaving to go to retail wasn't gonna be an issue but what I really wanted to do was work at a museum gift shop which is what I did accomplish for like a month or two it was underpaid but i i needed a bridge job to get me from point a to point b and now at the time that i'm filming this i'm starting a new job that actually pays really well and has good benefits and now we're kind of back to to normal like everything's regulated i'm not feeling underpaid i was working at a really popular museum in manhattan and i'm gonna miss it because i just had the cutest interactions with guests there it's so interesting how in my one year at the queen's museum which is the place that i left i dealt with such nasty people and then here at this museum where it's like thousands more people this is like actually high traffic situations i've it's been nothing but amazing people and it is the same type of demographics but for some reason what that museum in the park just brings in the trash there was also a lot going on with health problems we had a lot of deaths in the family no one that i was particularly close to but that's just um i'm a byproduct of of a family like i am not close to my extended family i grew up here my whole life as a little child to the age of what 30 something now I, I my parents are my parents and i have my older brother and that's it there's a couple people from my extended family that i sort of talk to but i just don't agree with a lot of the decisions they've made in life i don't like the way they've treated my parents I am not as forgiving to to that situation and of course it makes sense because I didn't grow up with them versus my parents who did so there's a lot of deaths and I feel bad for my parents I've seen the toll it's taken on them financially mentally emotionally and I wish I could help them more and my mom went my parents both went to Colombia separately we couldn't afford to have them go at the same time financially we just haven't been well this economy I know we're all feeling it while my mom wasn't here it was like me having to pick up the pieces and be in the kitchen and stuff like that and if you know me you know that's not really the role that I have even in my relationship with my husband so uh, it's just been a struggle and I'm, I'm finally seeing the light I guess the only issues I've been having lately is just balancing certain things trying to do YouTube feeling like my channels are dying and then also having technical difficulties because this is the second time I filmed this video the first time I filmed it I edited it and exported it and everything and then my ca my computer froze because my memory my storage is just down the drain i've been trying to delete as much as i can and it's just a hot mess like i'm just exhausted i'm pretty sure you can tell like it's been it's like i finally have free time to do content and then something happens that prevents me from being able to actually upload it and it's super duper frustrating but that is where i've been that's what's been going on um it's just been a lot and it's really hard to compile into a video who cares like it is what it is you really no point dwelling now that we've caught up with each other i can finally just start fresh and do what I want to do with this channel. And yeah, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.